Let's go ahead and place our design on our tentative design sheet, which we will do every time you have a treatment plan. The first thing I like to do is cross off all the teeth that we're not going to use in our design. And all of these. Then I like to start by drawing my direct retainers. On the second molar, we decided that we would do a ring clasp. And I'm going to show you that we're going to need to have a mesial rest. Uh, we're going to have to have a distal rest on a ring clasp. So we're going to have a little guide plate coming up here. And the guide plate will be end at the bottom of the um, cap, the cir cap circumferential that is the ring clasp. It'll go all the way around here and we'll engage a 0.01 undercut on the mesial facial. So then our direct retainer arm is on the lingual aspect and our reciprocal arm will be on the buccal aspect and that will come down and become a guide plate at that point. This guide plate goes all the way up to this rest. This guide plate goes up to the bottom of the uh, reciprocal component. This will be in the middle third of the tooth. This first two thirds has to be above the survey line and the last terminal third will go under our survey line. And we discussed why we were doing this because this is the greatest undercut and it requires us to do the least amount of adjustment on that tooth. Then on our canine on this, we're going to have a distal incisal angle rest. Our other option is the acid etch cingulum rest. And our framework will look like this. It will come up around that rest and it will go down a, a guide plate right there. This side will become plating for our reciprocal component. And on this one, we decided we were going to have a wrought wire clasp which would be soldered some distance. It will come up this guide plate area and then it'll come from the occlusal or incisal edge down and grab a .02 undercut. And it should be at least about half of it under the survey line because um, they come out of adjustment often. On the other side of the arch, we're going to do the conventional eye bar. And the eye bar starts off with a mesial rest and we have a distal guide plate. Here's our mesial rest. Now our mesial rest, I should have made a little bit of a sluice way right here because the metal's got to come up from the back of that tooth and um, it will come this way. I'm going to draw my rest right here. Now this part will be coming down with the minor connector it will avoid the marginal gingiva and it will come up and grab our guide plate. Our guide plate has to come to where the tooth becomes a little bit smaller so that the combination of this minor connector coming up here and this guide plate coming back to the smaller portion of the tooth will prevent the eye bar from moving the tooth to the lingual when it flexes into this undercut. So our eye bar comes up the middle third, <clears throat> it comes straight down, it avoids the marginal gingiva by four millimeters, it swings back, and it goes into our base attachment. Back here, it's a little wider at its origin, then it gets progressively smaller when it um, emerges out of the acrylic resin right in this area. It would be about two millimeters. It comes up, engages the .01 undercut, and then Above it, it goes up to the survey line, or it has at least a 2 by 2 millimeter pod on the end of it that is touching the tooth for more stability. This rest becomes our lingual plate on this premolar, and we're going to plate all the way around. And plating is drawn above the survey line and um, not all the way up to the incisal edge, but it does cover the cingulums of the teeth. On this one, we decided we've got missing teeth here and we could either put tube teeth or we could put base attachment. I like base attachment on a mandibular if possible because it can be relined. So our 
base attachment will come up, our external finish line will come up like this, and it will fade out at the distal lingual line angle of our canine. We want to leave enough room to set a tooth that's as large as the, te as the teeth we're replacing and have it all incorporated in base attachment. So our external finish line looks like this. Our acrylic resin here is going to, we're going to have an internal finish line for these and it will come down like this and back up. And our other uh, part of the base attachment will come forward from our guide plate right there, come forward, come back up to a guide plate on our canine. And then we'll have a lot of openings where the acrylic resin can flow through the base attachment to retain the teeth to the framework. Back on this side, we'll draw first our major connector. The major connector on an extension base side comes down at about this uh, guide plate area and it slants a little bit posteriorly. It goes down to the functional floor of the mouth and it comes around and in this case we're going to take it back and comes up at the guide plate right back in this area. This one comes down and our base attachment again on this side will come back, cover retromolar pad, come around and come up at the distal of our abutment tooth right in here. Now we need to finish our base attachment within this base. So that, you notice that the base comes right to the edge of this pointed area. That's so we have a nice butt joint. Then our base attachment swings up and comes back and it will be incorporated into the area where teeth will be. We're going to make a processing stop right in here in this first loop that we're making. We'll have some other circles. And one more maybe. Okay. Our finish line where this acrylic joins the major connector will be located right there. So I think we have everything. I'm going to just give myself some little notes and I'm going to say cast circumferential ring clasp here, rot wire to a 0.02 undercut, eye bar to a 0.01 undercut. Other things that you might want to note is if you would do tube teeth in this area instead of the base attachment or if you were doing an acid etch cingulum rep. We have some other designs that we could possibly use on this and I do want to present those to you. This one, I'll, I'll leave it. You can turn off, uh, you can stop your picture and, and pause it so you can see this. The difference in this drawing is that it has tube teeth in both places. Again, I don't like this design as well because it can't be relined. It has an acid etch composite cingulum rest. I've used a cast circumferential clasp to a 0.01 undercut, which is different. Um, we've done the wrought wire clasp with plating and a 0.02 mesiofacial undercut which is one of our options. We've added an auxiliary rest. Here's another option. We've used the interproximal ring clasp or the reverse circlet clasp as it's called by the two different textbooks which calls for a distofacial 0.01 undercut, a cast direct retainer mesial rest and a lingual arm uh, on the lingual side or a plate if you don't have enough room to dip down here. This one shows the cast circumferential clasp. That's really the only difference there. This other one, another option, calls for extending our major connector all the way back to the distal of this second molar and having a clasp direct retainer arm coming to the mesial buckle 0.01 undercut. 
So this is an option for how to treat this. Our major connector then has to extend all the way back to here. Some people would like that for stability. It also, this one shows the modified T-bar design, how it's drawn with a mesial rest, uh, it actually an embrasure rest on the modified T-bar, um, a guide plate dipping down on the lingual, and the bar coming up the middle of the tooth and going into a distal facial undercut. This one also so shows that we have the composite cingulum rest. Which design is the correct design? They can all be used provided we have the undercuts on the teeth on our cast. None of these are wrong. They all meet all the rules. If they're drawn properly, they would each be correct. We do prefer the eye bar convention with the mesial rest, distal guide plate, and the eye bar in that it is the most kind clasping mechanism on an extension base removable partial denture.